This is the first time I've worn my Taylor Swift cardigan in a video, so I feel like it's a very special occasion. So welcome to my January wrap up and my February TBR. I'm super proud of how I started off 2021. I'm just so pumped, I'm so ready. I've read seven books so far this year and I'm so, so proud of myself. If you've been watching my channel for a long time, you know that like my average amount of books that I read in a month, or at least to me, what feels like my average is about four books. So having read seven already in January, it just makes me feel so excited. It makes me feel really pumped to read in February. I'm in the middle of like so many books right now, but I'm also really excited to get into some of the books that are on my TBR that I haven't started. So let's just get into the books that I read in January, then we can talk about the books I wanna read in February. So like I said, I read seven books for the month of January, Four of them were physical books, and then two of them were audiobooks, and one of them was an ebook, which was also an ARC. So we'll start off with the physical books that I read, and the first one was Legend Born by Tracy Dion. And I started this book back, I think, in October, maybe November. Anyway, I started this book in 2020. I ended up finishing it in 2021. I loved it so much and I cannot stop thinking about it. I love all of like the fan art that I found on like Twitter. I always reblog, <laughs> I always reblog it, oh my gosh. I always retweet it, sorry. I am like have Tumblr on the brain right now. I always retweet the fan art, I just love it so much. And this book is just, it's exactly the kind of books that I wanna read in 2021, especially with like YA. This is it, like this is like the bar. <laughs> and I want everything that I read to reach that bar, so. I loved this book. I was really surprised because A, it's a contemporary fantasy. I don't typically like contemporary fantasy. And then B, it's also an Arthurian legend retelling, which I don't tend to like those either. So I was a little nervous, but I had a lot of faith in it. I knew that it had a love triangle and I had heard little like, you know, whispers about a possible polyamorous love triangle. So I was really excited to get into this book and it did not disappoint at all. It completely exceeded my expectations. So this book follows Brie after her mother dies and she ends up getting this opportunity to go to a college and attend this program for high schoolers. And while she's at this college, she starts to meet these different people and they're a little fishy. There's something kind of going on between all of them. And she finds out that they're all part of the secret society of legend born. And basically that means that they're all descended from the people within the Arthurian legends. I'm still not totally 100% sure on like, King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table, like that doesn't all make sense in my brain, but this actually really helped me kind of like piece everything together and keep it in check. But overall, I love this book so much. Ah, and like I said, it has a love triangle. I personally really love love triangles. I know a lot of people don't like them. I know a lot of people don't like them and I totally understand that. However, I feel like the love triangle in this book was done so perfectly. It was done in a really fresh kind of way and it definitely hints at the possibility of a polyamorous love triangle, which I know a lot of people are into right now and I'm really excited about it as well. So don't let the love triangle hinder you from checking out this book. It's really good, it's well written, it's such a fun little like contemporary fantasy and it just completely hooks you into the story. I love Brie so much. She's one of my new favorite main characters and I want everybody to get to know her and to read her story. I loved it. So the next book I read was one that was highly anticipated for me from 2020. For a split second I was like, wait, did it come out in 2021? No, 2020. And that is Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Maniscalco. I gave this book a four out of five stars. Wait, did I say? I gave this book a five out of five stars. I hope I said that. Anyway, I gave this book a four out of five stars. I really enjoyed this one. However, it didn't totally meet my expectations 
for a Carrie Maniscalco book. I really love the Stalking Jack the Ripper series. If you know me, it's one of my favorite series. And I think I gave like every single one of those books five stars. I'm just like such a sucker for that series. I love it so much. But this one didn't really make me feel the same sort of excitement that I did with Stalking Jack the Ripper. It just didn't completely go all the way for me. And it's really hard to pinpoint exactly what I didn't like about this book because on paper, it's like everything that I would enjoy. I, you know, genuinely did enjoy my experience reading this book, but there's just something about it that I couldn't really connect fully to the characters. I felt like they were really interesting ideas of characters, but there was something about them where I just, I could not connect. I couldn't go deeper. So I think that might be why I didn't fully enjoy it. But overall, I felt like it was a really great book. I enjoyed the romance a lot. <laughs> it definitely had that sort of enemies to lovers vibe going on, which I appreciate. But I think I said this in one of my vlogs that I'm really excited to read the sequel because I think that the sequel will go even deeper into the characters and I might enjoy it a lot more. So basically this book is about Amelia and her twin sister, Vittoria, ends up dead. She finds her, she's dead. And there's this strange guy that she's never met looming over her. And now Amelia has so many questions unanswered and she wants to figure out what happened to her sister. And Amelia believes that the seven princes of hell have something to do with it. And so that's kind of like the whole gist of the story. I really enjoyed it. And if you're looking for a really fun, fast, romantic fantasy, this is a really good book for you. It's not a super long book. It's really engaging and the story moves super fast. So that's what I really appreciated about it. However, it's just like the characters that I just could not connect to, unfortunately. So another four to five star book and actually the last physical book that I have on my read list. I don't know why I thought I had four physical books. I can't count. I only had three. So the last physical book that I read for the month of January was How the King of Elfheim Learned to Hate Stories by Holly Black. This title messes me up every time I try to say it, every time I try to type it out. I, I don't know why, I, I just can't get all the words in the right order. But I did actually really enjoy this book. I gave it a four to five stars like I said and I low-key wish that there were more books like this because I love all of like the illustrations that are in the book. Look at how gorgeous that is. And I like that there's illustrations that like accompany the actual text. And I wish that more books did this and I also wish that this book was longer so I could enjoy it more because the artwork is absolutely gorgeous. Like look at that. It's like total fairy tale art and it worked so well with the stories that were told in this book. I sincerely just wish it was like three times longer. And also I feel like this kind of artwork and this kind of like storytelling style works so well with fantasy books because it kind of gives you something to picture and it gives you something to look at and it just kind of reminds me a lot of like the chapter books that you would read in like elementary school that had like all the little drawings that would go along with like the text and it was so cute and I loved it. Such a fun reading experience but I don't really want to read graphic novels. Like I've attempted to read so many graphic novels and none of them have done it for me. I can't make it past the halfway mark. There's just something about like, there's too many pictures, not enough words. My brain can't compute. But this, this is like the sweet spot. This is like just enough pictures just enough words it just it works for me so this one is kind of just like self-explanatory i feel like there's not a lot to say about it it basically just follows a lot through carden's life and how he became the way he is especially in like the cruel prince it does have some scenes that are set after queen of nothing which i appreciate it was just really fun to get to look through carden's life see how he grew up see the things that have affected him and it just made me appreciate his character even more. I really, really enjoyed it. And really the only reason I gave it four out of five stars is because I feel like it didn't go into enough depth into his life. I wish that there would have been longer. I wish there would have been more to learn from him. And I just generally think it should have just been longer. Okay, so these are the three physical books that I read in January. Now off to the audiobooks. 
and the first book I read in January was actually an audiobook and that was The Midnight Library by Matt Haig and I gave that a 5 out of 5 stars. I really liked this audiobook because the narrator was Carrie Mulligan and she's an actress and I really like her as an actress and she just did such a good job narrating this book. It was so beautifully done. I think I read this in like one or two sittings. Like it was like a super fast audiobook got through it really quick and actually the only reason I decided to read it as an audiobook was because for months I could not find it in stock literally anywhere. I tried Amazon, I tried Barnes and Noble, I tried Book Depository, I tried my local bookstore. Literally I could not find it anywhere. But thankfully I kept forgetting to end my Audible subscription so I had a couple of audiobook like credits. So I decided to take advantage of that and I got this as an audiobook and I'm really glad I did. It was so beautiful. I do have to say though that there are trigger warnings for suicide. That's basically the entire premise of the book. It's about this woman. I believe that she's either in her late 20s or early 30s and she feels like her life hasn't really gone anywhere. She feels like she's made all the wrong decisions and she comes to the point when her cat dies that she feels as though there's no other reason to keep on living and she attempts suicide. So once that happens, she's basically transported into what is called the Midnight Library and she's given the chance to go and experience these different lives where she made different decisions. And I really loved the message of this book. I really appreciated the entire narrative. And this felt like the kind of book where the main character didn't matter as much as the lessons that she learned and the experiences that she had and the choices she made which is something I really appreciated and I feel like it's really helpful for people who have experienced depression, are experiencing depression, and you can kind of see yourself reflected in this narrative and I think that that's what the book is trying to accomplish. It's definitely a book that's going to make you think about, you know, your life choices, about the things that you regret, why you regret them, and looking at your life and how it is today. So it's just a really self-reflective kind of novel, which I appreciate. I feel like I don't read a lot of books like that, but I would definitely like to read more in the future. The next book I read was also an audiobook and I did not rate this one. This is Good Girl by Piper Lawson. And I was kind of just in the mood for like a really quick romance. I wanted, you know, a romance audiobook that I could get through in like one sitting. And then I ended up finding this book on Hoopla and I realized that it was part of a series and I'm like, well, we'll see if I like the first book and if I do, then we'll continue. It's not a big deal, not a huge commitment. And I ended up really not liking it. Like, I just felt like it was super boring. Not a lot of stuff happened. It was just kind of like blah. And then I realized that it's technically a full story that's cut up into I think three separate books. So it's kind of hard to explain. They were all released separately at separate times, but they're all one story, which I don't know, maybe that's like super common in like the romance community. I have read a bit of romance, but not necessarily this kind of romance. So maybe I just didn't know what to expect and that's my fault. So that's why I didn't end up rating it anything. I still ended up marking it as read though because I did read it. Um, basically this is about a girl and she is looking for a job and she ends up getting hired as like an IT person for this rock group I think and she gets to go on tour with them and she gets to you know kind of help out with all of the lights and projections or whatever they have going on with their set but I just found a lot of the characters to be bland boring the plot line was kind of boring I chose this one specifically because it kind of reminds me a lot of like different little like fan fiction plot lines that I used to read because my main fan fiction was the Jonas Brothers fan fiction. So it definitely gave me that kind of vibe, but it wasn't nearly as good and not nearly as like, I guess, spicy. And I didn't really feel the need to continue on. Like I did try to read the second book, but it was just so boring. I just could not get through it. So I just decided I'll mark it as read. I'm not gonna rate it because that feels unfair. 
and we're just gonna move on. The last audiobook that I read for this month was Trick by Natalia Jaster, and I gave that book a three out of five stars. This actually was a recommendation from the app Storygraph, or I guess the website, it's not necessarily an app, but it's basically like Goodreads, and it's really cool because it'll take a lot of like the things that you like and generate a recommendation based off of your interests and this is one of the recommendations it gave me. So I ended up using one of my Audible credits to read this book and I'm really glad I did because I am definitely interested in more of Natalia Jaster's books. I feel like the writing was really good and I liked the overall idea of the book but I just don't feel like the execution was totally amazing. I just didn't really love the characters. I wasn't super invested in the romance. It wasn't like a make or break for me. But I have looked over some of Natalia Jaster's other books and they seem a lot more interesting to me. So I'm kind of glad that I was introduced to a new author or a new to me author. So that was really exciting. There's not a lot to say about Trick because like the plot isn't really like a huge thing. And there's also some disability rep that I was kind of like on the fence about. And I don't feel like a good enough judge of whether the disability rep was good or not. So if you are disabled and you are a reviewer, let me know down below, like leave a link to your review of this book. Or if you've seen any other like own voices disability reviews for Trick, let me know. I want the links and I want to read them because I have some thoughts but I don't want to like share them if I'm like totally off base. But basically it's about this girl and she is the autumn princess and basically in this world it's cut up into four different kingdoms. There's like the winter kingdom, the summer kingdom, spring, autumn, you get the gist. And the autumn princess is very cold and standoffish and very proper but she also has a friend who is like a jester and they're not supposed to be friends because of like class distinctions I guess. But she's friends with him anyway and they meet up in secret and they're like BFFs. Um, there's also some queer representation in this book because her best friend is gay and then also her love interest is either bisexual or pansexual. It's never really stated clearly in the book but he is multiple genders attracted so that was really cool. I did really appreciate the queer representation in this book. It was very casual, not a big deal. So the Autumn Princess ends up meeting this court jester and his name is Poet. That's not his real name, it's like a fake name. And he's like super flirtatious and just very playful and mysterious and I really liked him but it's kind of the same thing that happened with Kingdom of the Wicked where it felt like I really liked these characters or the idea of these characters but I just couldn't connect with them on any sort of like real deep level. So I feel like that's where the book kind of lost me because I couldn't connect to them so I just didn't really feel very invested to them and it just ended up being really lukewarm in general so I enjoyed the book. I think I would recommend it or at least I'd recommend reading some of her other books and I'm really excited to read some of her other books and hopefully I will like those a little bit better. And then the very last book that I read for the month of January was Better Together by Christine Riccio and this was an arc that I got from NetGalley and as you all know it was one of my most anticipated books for 2021 so I was super excited when I got approved for it. But unfortunately, I really, really didn't like it. I gave it a one star, which I know probably sounds super harsh, especially since I loved Again But Better. I loved Again But Better. And just this fell so flat. It just nosedived and exploded and it was so bad. <laughs> and I really hate to say that. That makes me feel really awful to say that I hated this book. It was just, there were so many things about it. I don't even know if I could completely explain all of them in one succinct thought or video. I didn't like the characters. I didn't like the relationships between the characters. I didn't like the romance. I didn't like the plot. The writing was so-so. Overall, it was just a huge dumpster fire and I'm so, so sad about it. I was really really looking forward to this book. It has a really interesting premise of being a twist between Freaky Friday and The Parent Trap. It's really kind of difficult to explain and I feel like she didn't incorporate the fantastical magical elements of the book very well. I feel like it was done so much better in Again But Better, like the magical elements were just gorgeous, beautiful. It heightened the experience of the book. It was just so much fun. 
This one, I feel like it complicated the book way too much. It really didn't serve a lot of a purpose in the book. I feel like it completely could have been written out and you could have just done a parent trap instead of doing Freaky Friday. I feel like with those kind of plot lines, you have to either choose one or the other. And this kind of reminded me of a book that I might have come up with and I might have started writing it and then within like 10 pages, I would have been like, this does not work. This just does not work. It cannot be done. It just, it just didn't work at all for me and I feel really bad about it. I wish that like, it had worked. I wish that I had loved it because the cover is so gorgeous and like the idea of it is so much fun but the characters were so insufferable and the plot was so unbelievable. It did not make sense. I feel like the reason that the parent trap at least like you can suspend your disbelief for it a little bit is because A they're twins and B they were separated as tiny tiny babies. Like babies to where you cannot remember anything. And they lived on complete opposite ends of the world. That's why it worked. That's why you can suspend your disbelief. But in Better Together they just live on opposite sides of the country and they were separated when they both had memories of it. So I feel like it just doesn't work. It all kind of unravels after that because they both remember each other. <laughs> and so it stops being a parent trap and just starts being like weird family dynamic that just doesn't work for me. <laughs> so yeah, unfortunately I didn't like it and I don't want to dissuade anybody from reading it, but it just was not good. Okay, so those are the books that I read in the month of January. I feel like I took a long time talking about those books. So we're gonna go through my February TBR really fast. So the first book that I'm currently reading is Grave Mercy by Robin Lefevers, and I am loving this book so much. I'm currently 146 pages into it and I'm really loving it. I think it's so much fun. I actually saw people talking about this on Twitter and I was like, okay, I have the series. I need to read it immediately. So I picked it up and I'm really glad that I did because the writing is gorgeous. The characters are so interesting. The romance that is starting in this book, oh my gosh. I'm in love with it. I, I can't believe that more people haven't talked about this book. That blows my mind. I feel like this is totally up so many people's alleys. They need to read this. Like book Twitter, book TikTok would love this book. I don't know how more people haven't talked about it. It's so good. I'm still on my fantasy kick over here. So a lot of these books are going to be fantasy. And the next one is Daughters of Nri by Renny K. Amayo. And I'm really excited to read this book. It was kind of hard to choose which like other fantasy I wanted to read for this month. And then I ended up remembering that I have this book. And I was like, oh, I haven't heard a lot of people talk about this book. So I should probably read it and see, you know, what I think about it. And I'm really excited to read it. I did get it as a gift from Amber at Lines and Vines on Twitter. And that's so sweet. I didn't even realize that I got this as a gift. But I'm really excited about this book. The description sounds really exciting. It says a gruesome war results in the old gods departure from Earth. The only remnants of their existence lie in two girls. Twins separated at birth. Goddesses who grew up believing that they are human. Daughters of Nuri explores their epic journey of self-discovery as they embark on a path back to one another. Another case of sisters separated at birth, but I hope that this one does it so much better. And I think I'll really enjoy it because it is fantasy. I believe that this is part of a series, but I can't remember if I've heard anything about a sequel, so... We'll keep an eye out for that, but I am really excited to read this book and hopefully I'll really enjoy it. It seems like a really short read. I think it's only a little over 300 pages, so we'll see. The next book I want to read is one I've heard a little bit about on TikTok and that is A Winter's Promise by Christelle DeVoe. And I also know that Kay likes this book as well and I'll leave their channel link down below. So I have kind of a recommendation from somebody I really trust. I love Kay, they're amazing. And then I also have a recommendation from TikTok. And so I'm really, really excited about this book. I've had it for a little bit. I've always wanted to read it because it's always caught my eye. And I know that it's also translated from French, which is really exciting because I haven't read very many translated works, but I really want to. So super excited about this one. The main character's name is Ophelia, which I really appreciate it because I am a Hamlet stan. So I love Ophelia. But yeah, I'm really excited about this. I know that this has a marriage really early on in the book and it's kind of like an arranged marriage. 
and the book goes through that so I'm really excited to read it. It says Ophelia's peaceful if somewhat dull existence on the Ark of Anima is interrupted when she is promised in marriage to Thorn, a taciturn and influential member of a powerful clan from a distant Ark, the Cold and Icy Pole. So yeah, I'm really excited about this book. I have high hopes for it and I think I'm really going to enjoy it. Another one of my faves recommended me this book and it is RC and I will leave his channel link down below as well. And it's Girl, Serpent, Thorn by Melissa Bashadust, and I am so excited to read this book. Another kind of short fantasy. I'm not sure if this is a standalone or not, so I guess we'll see about that. I thought I just got a paper cut. Anyway, super excited. I know that this is sapphic, and that's really all I need to know about it, is that it's fantasy and that it's sapphic. So I'm very excited about it. It says sometimes the princess is the monster, which is very intriguing. The next two are actually both book of the month picks and both book of the month picks for December. And the first one is The Prophets by Robert Jones Jr. And this is another book that R.C. read and that he really enjoyed and I'm very excited to read it as well. I've heard that the prose is really beautiful and lyrical, which I love. And it's also a historical fiction about these two enslaved men who fall in love. And I'm really excited about that synopsis. So I feel like that's all I really need to know. I'm excited for the gorgeous prose and I'm really, really pumped to dive into this one. And then for my add-on for my December box, I ended up choosing The Heiress Gets a Duke by Harper St. George. And this one, I believe, was never really a book of the month. It's just part of their Love Stories collection, but I was really excited when I saw it because the cover is absolutely gorgeous and I love it so much. And also, I just watched Bridgerton about a week or so ago, so I'm still really in the mood for something like historical romance and this one seemed to be a lot of fun. It says American heiress August Crenshaw has aspirations, but unlike her peers, it isn't some stuffy British lord she wants wrapped around her finger. It's Crenshaw Ironworks, the family business. When it's clear that August's outrageously progressive ways render her unsuitable for a respectable match, her parents offer up her younger sister to the highest entitled bidder instead. This simply will not do. August refuses to leave her sister to the mercy of a loveless marriage. Evan Sterling, the Duke of Rothschild, has no intention of walking away from the marriage. He's recently inherited the title only to find his coffers empty, and with countless lives depending on him, he can't walk away from the fortune a Crenshaw heiress would bring him. But after meeting her fiery sister, he realizes Violet isn't the heiress he wants. He wants August, and he always gets what he wants. But August won't go peacefully to her fate, she decides to show Rothschild that she's no typical London wallflower. Little does she realize that every stunt she pulls to make him call off the wedding only makes him want her even more. So I'm really excited about this one. I don't read a lot of historical romance. I wish I did. I probably should because I'd probably really enjoy it. But I'm really excited for this book. So, so yeah, these are all of the books that I want to read in February. I know it's kind of a big TBR for such a short month, but I'm really excited about it. I think I'll be able to do it. I'm also almost finished with The Bird and the Sword by Amy Harmon. So that is the audiobook that I've been currently reading. And yeah, I had a really great January reading month. I did so well. Seven books is pretty good for me. Hopefully I will do even better in February. And I know I did say that I was planning on reading the Throne of Glass series in February. I decided to push that back into March. So for my birth month, we're going to be reading Throne of Glass. So I'm really excited about that. Let me know down below in the comments what books that you read in January and which ones you're looking forward to reading in February. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Also, go ahead and follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Goodreads, and Storygraph. I have started to use Storygraph a little bit more. And I will see you all in my next video. Bye! Oh, oh, oh.